So the fireman is the story of the earth catching fire. It's about a pathogen, a spore called dragon scale. And people get it on them and it can't be taken off. And then when they come under stress, the spore starts a chemical reaction, a chain reaction and ultimately they spontaneously combust. And so our hero is a young woman named Harper who becomes infected with this spore. And at the same time, she discovers she's pregnant. And she knows that the baby can be born healthy, that just because she has the spore doesn't mean that the infant is also infected. And so she decides she's going to try to stay alive long enough to deliver a healthy baby. And that's the leaping off point for the book. So where did the idea come from? Um, I read something about athlete's foot and I thought what if you weaponized athlete's foot? What if it was so uh, so harmful that it caused you to burst into flame instead of just causing your feet to itch? And, uh, and that was how I came up with the idea for the spore at the center of the fireman, dragon scale. But dragon scale is a cool name and weaponized athlete's foot isn't. Um, and I think it's important in a story like this, a horror thriller, for everything to be really cool. There have been a lot of apocalyptic stories, a lot of end of the world stories, and they're so grim and bleak and hopeless. And I wanted to write a kind of anti-apocalyptic story, uh, a story about um, humanity struggling on even in the face of really dark setbacks and, and you know, really horrible uh, catastrophes. And I felt the main character had to reflect that goal. And so Harper, the hero of the story, loves musicals. She loves Julie Andrews. And she's sort of relentlessly optimistic, relentlessly hopeful, and very brave, sort of very quietly brave. And, and I thought those were good qualities for um, for a story that could become very dark very fast uh, if you're not careful. Um, so she, she does have this terrific spirit inside her, this terrific fighting spirit that's, that's married to a kind of sunny optimism, um, which I think is a nice contrast. When I write a story, it's important to me to have a strong sense of place. Um, if you're going to write a story about a man buying a ghost on the internet, or if you're going to write a story about a, a kind of soul vampire that um, r drives a car that runs on human spirits instead of gasoline, you're asking your readers to come along and accept some very strange concepts, some very wild notions. And I think they will do that for you if you can convince them, if you can create a convincing representation of reality. Um, and I, the only way I know how to do that is to write about the places that I know. And so almost all my stories begin in New England. And because I've lived there for most of my life, I know Boston, I know New Hampshire, I know Maine. I know what the roads are like. I know how the people talk. I know what the work is like. Um, and I feel like if, if I can provide those gritty, granular details about life um, in that part of the world, people will accept that, they will say this is how it really is, and then also accept my ghost or my vampire or my, my plague of spontaneous combustion. When the story begins, when we're first introduced to Harper, she's a school nurse, and um, her, her medical knowledge um, becomes an important key to her survival as the story goes forward. And she's also the sort of person in a crisis when other people are flapping around and weeping and beginning to cry, become steadily calmer. And uh, I think that is a, a, a unique personality type that you do see this sometime. The, per the person whose voice gets quieter and quieter as everyone around them begins to scream louder and louder. And this is the person we naturally look to for guidance. The person who is thinking instead of reacting and feeling instead of panicking. Um, and, and also I thought it was natural in a story about illness, about infection, uh, to write about someone whose life work is to battle infection and to make people well. And so it just seemed natural to, um, to make the story about a nurse. Also, also um, you know, she's this unflappable kind of figure because um, she loves Julie Andrews and Julie Andrews seems like a person who would never burst into tears under pressure. Um, or a person who would never not know what to say in an awful moment. 
Um, and I do think we need these role models, these guides, even though they're completely unrealistic. No one can really be like the characters Julie Andrews plays in all those movies. Um, but they still become these kind of aspirational figures for us. Someone, you know, uh, even if we won't hit the target, something to shoot for.